Hi, my name is Alicia Savar from Bridger Digital. In some of our previous videos, we discussed how you select the amount of ceramic capacitors that you need on the input of your power supply in order to reduce the ripple. And in this video, we're going to talk about how much bulk or energy storage capacitors that you need, uh, which is going to be typically electrolytics. So, um, as we mentioned earlier, we need a certain amount of bulk or energy storage capacitance. Uh, this is usually done with electrolytic capacitors and we need this so that if we have a load step, the input voltage does not dip. Um, there is another reason why we may need this and that is to hold the input voltage at a certain level uh, if the line voltage goes down temporarily for a short period of time that is usually called hold up time. Now in this video we're going to be talking about how we size our capacitors based on a load step requirements. However, there is a very detailed presentation which you can download for free from the link below that will also show you how to do the calculations based on hold up time. The, 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 the two ways are actually quite similar. So if you follow this uh, uh, video, then I'm pretty sure with the aid of the presentation, you can also do it again with hold up time if that is what you need. Now, let us assume that we have a power supply and we give it a load step. Um, the extra energy that we use when we give it a load step has, has going to have to come from somewhere and that will cause a dip on the input line if we do not have enough capacitance. This is probably best explained with a, with a worked example and how we're going to size this up. So if I go to the board, let us say, uh, for uh, simplicity, that I've got a converter, input voltage is 12 volts, output voltage is 3.3 volts, maximum output current is, is 2 amps. For simplicity, let us say we have an efficiency of 100%, switching frequency of 200 kilohertz, which will give me a period of 5 microseconds. Now, let us say that Right now, I'm only drawing one amp out of the two amps, and at a certain point in time, I'm going to give it a load step of 50%. So initially, my current I out is one amps, and then I'm going to give it a 50% load step, so my out, my out output current is going to go to two amps. Therefore, the extra amount of current that I'm going to need is going to be an extra one amps. Now, we know from school day physics that the energy is your power times time, and power would be volts times amps times the time. Uh, volts, in our case, is 3.3 volts. The amount of extra energy that we need is this extra amp that we're going to take, so that will be 1 amps, and we're going to allow a certain amount of time for the input voltage to dip and recover. You may have this specified somewhere, but failing that, take a reasonable number. Let us say that we don't want the voltage to dip more than 10 switching cycles, so if one switching cycle is 5 microseconds, 10 switching cycles, T would be 50 microseconds. There is no hard or fast rule as to what this time should be. It is something that is either specified or you have to find a reasonable number based on your own specification. Let's say that 50 microseconds is a suitable value and you end up with 3.3 volts times 1 amp times 50 microseconds, which I worked out in advance is going to be around 165 microjoules. And that is the amount of extra energy that I'm going to need if I give a load step of one amp to this power supply. And this equation you can find in high school physics books. Um, now, this is the amount of energy that I need. I also know from uh, school level physics that the energy stored in the capacitor is going to be half times CV squared. So you can see where we are going with this. Initially, I have, on um, this is now the input, because this is the, the input capacitor that I'm concerned with. Initially, I have 12 volts, 
the amount of energy that is stored is half times the capacitors that I'm going to buy times 12 volts squared. Now, how much am I going to allow it to dip by? So I'm already saying that I'm only going to allow it to dip for around 50 microseconds, right? And I need to find the reasonable voltage that this is going to be allowed to dip by. Again, that really depends very much on your uh, specifications. Let us say that I don't want this to dip by more than 5% of the rail. So 5% of 12 volts for me is 600 millivolts. Therefore, 12 minus 600 millivolts is going to be 11.4 volts. So I start with the energy of half CV squared, where V is 12, right? And then I'll have another half CV squared, where V is, let me change the color so that we can see a little bit better. <clears throat> so this is 12 volts. I'm going to allow it to fall down by only 5% of uh, 12, which makes it 11.6 volts and we know that this is the amount of energy that we need to store that we calculated earlier on so that is going to be equal to 165 microjoules you know this 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 this is the same you can calculate the c and therefore we can calculate how much capacitance we need um, now, please note that uh, this amount for simplicity, let us say, is going to be 20 microfarads. Uh, please note that uh, electrolytic capacitors come with 20% plus or minus tolerance, so you're going to have to buy it 20% bigger than what you calculated, just in case you get the minus 20%, uh, and on top of it, the voltage rating will have to be above 12 volts plus some, so you would be buying 16 or 25 volt uh, capacitor. But we are not done yet, because we still have to work out the ripple current and make sure that we don't violate the ripple current rating of the capacitor. The manufacturers provide us with a ripple current rating, which we must not violate. What they mean by the ripple current is that if you have got a capacitor, let's put some ESR, that is the parasitic equivalent series resistance, right? Uh, and there's some current is going to go through here. Um, the ripple current rating is specified in AC RMS. So what they mean is that if you've got a current, the DC component is not going to go through here. What you need is the RMS of the AC component of that. Now, if you remember from our previous video, we used our ceramics in order to reduce the ripple voltage on our input, which is going to appear across this uh, electrolytic capacitor. And again, if you remember from the previous video, we limited that. We selected the size of our capacitors to be 100 millivolts. So delta V in peak to peak was 100 millivolts. If this were a true sine wave, um, you need the RMS value of it because the manufacturer is specifying the, the current ripple current rating in RMS. So as a sine wave, you would say that, okay, well, peak to peak is 100 millivolts. So if it was a sine wave, I would need the amplitude of that. So I divide that by two so that I get the peak value. And then I divide it by root two in order to get the RMS value. But for a power supply, it is not really a sine wave. At best, it's a triangulish looking waveform. And all we have to do to get the RMS value of a triangular wave is that instead of dividing it by root two, we divide by root three. So we started with 100 millivolts peak to peak. We need the RMS value. So if you divide that by to root three, you end up with delta V in RMS of around 30 millivolts. 
okay? And then we need the impedance of this capacitor at our ripple frequency, which is our switching frequency at 200 kilohertz. We know how to find the impedance of a capacitor at a certain frequency. We go to the manufacturer's data sheet, and nowadays they all have online tools. You go and you find out the impedance of this uh, capacitor at 200 kilohertz. For simplicity, let us say that it says that the uh, impedance of the capacitor at switching frequency is 30 milli ohms. Then, you, it's Ohm's law, 30 millivolts divided by 30 milli ohms gives you one amp AC RMS. In other words, the AC component that is gonna go through here is going to have an RMS value of one amp. Then you go back to the manufacturer data sheet and you make sure that the capacitor that you're buying has got an RMS value larger than one amps. It becomes a little bit of an iterative process because you look at a capacitor, you, you calculate, you need its impedance, uh, you go and calculate the uh, ripple current, you make sure that you're not gonna violate it. If you do, you go to the next one and you go back and forth a few times until you find the correct value of the ripple current. So we found our capacitance, let's say for simplicity around 20 microfarads. We found the, the rated voltage. So you add some tolerance on top of that, minimum 20% plus some more to be on the safe, safe side and we found out the ripple current. It is getting a little bit confusing, so we have put everything into WDS, and we're going to use Red Expert Worth Electronics online tool in order to go back and forth and hone down on exact value of the capacitor that we're going to choose for our power supply. So I'm going to go to the computer, I'm going to show you how WDS, our power supply design software, calculates all of these, and then we go and select the capacitor from Red Expert online. Okay, so we are not going to show exactly how we go about selecting our capacitors down to the component uh, part number. Um, here I'm running WDS. Obviously, WDS will calculate everything that uh, we have talked about on the board. Let us design a buck converter. I'm not going to change these settings. Uh, we're going to stick with a default value. I'm going to have a nominal voltage of 12 volts in. Uh, 3.3 volts out with two amps. But if you remember, I was going to give it a 50% load step from one amp to two amps. So we go here to the input capacitor. And if you click on that, the first thing that we have to do is uh, we are going to select our uh, ceramics. We have covered that in a different video. I'm going to set that to 0.85%, uh, how much ripple I'm going to allow. And that gives me around 100 millivolts. Based on that, WDS calculates to about 22 microfarads. And uh, as we discussed in the previous video, we're going to have to increase that quite a bit because of the DC bias loss. Let us say that we're going to put 33 microfarads in for simplicity. Um, and then here, WDS allows you to uh, calculate the size of your capacitor based on holdup time. Uh, now, we haven't covered that in this video, uh, but uh, we give full details of how you do it in the presentation that you can download for free from the link uh, in, in the description. We, what we have discussed it is low transient. So uh, at the moment, uh, the default is 1% of the nominal input voltage. Let's make that 5%, and that gives me 600 millivolts dip. So I'm allowing the volt input voltage to dip by 600 millivolts. I'm going to size my electrolytic or bulk capacitors accordingly. Then uh, a load step of 50% again gives me going from one amp to two amps. And how long am I going to allow my uh, voltage to dip for five for 50 microseconds? Let us change, keep these as they are, but you can change them, of course, if you can. Based on that, WDS has calculated 23.5 microfarads worth of capacitance, and it's using exactly the same equation that we presented earlier on. Um, now, obviously, you have plus or minus 20% uh, tolerance on this, so we have to assume that is 20% less than 23 when we buy it. So we put some margin in, and. For simplicity, let us say that we are going to, to use 
33 microfarads worth of electrolytics. So I'm type in 33 microfarads. This is the amount that WDS calculated based on our requirements. This is what I'm going to solder in. Now here is what it becomes a little bit of a back and forth. Uh, we need the value of the impedance of the capacitor at the switching frequency. And of course we don't know that until we've gone to the manufacturer's the website or catalog to find what choice we have. So this 260 milliohms is just a, an estimate. What you really have to do is you have to go to the manufacturer's um, uh, website and you have to look at 33 microfarad capacitors that fit your criteria and see what the impedance at your switching frequency is. So let us do that. We are going to go to uh, Red Expert, that is from Worth Electronics, and here I'm going to select capacitors, and within that I'm going to select aluminium electrolytic and polymer capacitors. You can see here that you've got, at the moment, with no filtering whatsoever, over 2,000 capacitors. Obviously, we're not going to choose out of the 2,000, we have to narrow the field down a little. So you can go here to the capacitance value, and we know that we want to buy 33 microfarads, so you filter that down to 33 microfarads, and immediately your choice falls down to around 100 out of 2,000. Um, let us uh, also narrow it down by the voltage. We don't need a 450 volt uh, capacitor. Let us narrow it down to only the 16 volt capacitors, and now you have got a choice of 11. Uh, for power supplies, we typically prefer to have 105 degrees as temperature as opposed to 85. So let me go for 105 and that gives me a choice of 7. And then let us narrow it down by through a, a surface mount only. And I've ended up with a choice of 4. Out of these 4, uh, one of them is aluminium polymer. That will be much better performance, much lower ESR, and therefore much higher ripple current rating. You can see that this is much higher. Uh, however, it will be more expensive. So let us, for now, exclude that unless we absolutely have to. And we are ending up with a choice of 3 aluminium electrolytics. Then we need the impedance of this capacitor at our switching frequency because that is the ripple frequency and here that has been plotted so if I take this slider and then I take it to 200 kilohertz then the tool will automatically display my impedance at 200 kilohertz so that I can have a look and compare it with WDS I can sort it based on the highest to lowest. In all likeliness, that is going to be the cheapest one, 731 milliohms. And this particular capacitor has got a ripple current rating of 44 milliamps. So I have got 731 milliohms and 44 milliamps. So I now go back to WDS and I type in 731 milliohms and WDS calculates my maximum ripple current RMS of 28 milliamps and of course this has got 44. It is well within the specification so this first one will actually be a good choice. If that did not fit then we could go to the next one and the next one, but we've only got a choice of three or four. So we can very quickly narrow down to the actual part from it that we want. Finally, let us go back to WDS. Uh, I have got now 33 microfarads worth of ceramics. We have discussed that in a different video. I have got 33 microfarads worth of electrolytics. Uh, the uh, ripple current on it is 28 milliamps, which is lower than what is specified in the data sheet. I've also got my ripple voltage and the maximum voltage rating of the capacitor. So here we go. Uh, we have got uh, to a point whereby we have managed to choose our capacitor. There is a uh, very complete uh, presentation and from the link uh, in the description. You can also download WDS uh, from the link below. Hope you've enjoyed the video and hope to see you at one of our workshops.